60 Minutes Rewind. Auschwitz. The subject's almost too big to report, too ugly to understand, too hard to believe that it happened in our century, in our lifetime. But for half the population, it may seem like ancient history. It is not. It happened less than 40 years ago, and it was committed by people who considered themselves civilized. Perhaps then it's important to look back at what happened at Auschwitz and the other camps. That's what we'll do in our next story. Look back through the eyes of one woman whose story, like the story of every survivor, is a unique one. But she wrote a book. It is called Playing for Time, The Musicians of Auschwitz. We'll get to the meaning of that in a moment. We begin in Paris in the winter of 1978. In the Hotel de Ville, the city hall, it is the annual reunion of concentration camp survivors. They have been marked for life, members of a most exclusive club. They represent places, towns that will forever hold a single meaning. Belsen, Buchenwald, Dacha, Treblinka, Auschwitz. They are singing something called La Chanson de Marais, the Song of the Swamp. The strongest voice belongs to a tiny woman of 60 named Fania Fenelon, survivor of Auschwitz and Belsen. The song goes, the sounds of boots, the sounds of guns. Guards, day and night, blood, screams, tears, and death to escape. The fate of France's Jews was sealed in June 1940 when the Germans entered Paris. In 1943, Fania Fenelon was a mildly successful cabaret singer, a graduate of the conservatory who had to forsake classical music to make a living singing in the nightclubs. She was active in the French resistance, picked up bits of information from the German officers who visited the clubs. It was reserved for German army, the cabarets. No French there, only occupation army. And what sort of songs were you singing? I was singing operetta, and I was singing butterfly and uh, lots of uh, Strauss songs. You know, they loved it. When you were finally taken by the Germans arrested, how come? What happened? Uh, in our group of resistance was one woman who worked for us and for the Nazis. She was a double spy, if you call that that name. I don't know how you call that. So she denounced the whole group. It was a knock at the door, and it was Gestapo. I was so furious that finally I said, I'll tell you something. My father was a Jew. You mean you were not arrested because you were half Jewish? No, 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 because of the resistance. She, uh, she denounced the whole group, that woman. And they were so furious because three, nearly three and a half years, they knew me as a singer. They could never imagine that one member of my family was a Jew. I mean, I had false papers like everybody else. So they, they lost all interest in me. And instead of shooting me, they deported me to Auschwitz. We asked her if she could bear it to go back to Auschwitz with us. I will go with you. That as you remember. Yes, here I remember. Everything's here. The watchtower. Oh, the watchtower, yes. Auschwitz is a small town in Poland. It was probably the most notorious killing place of the war. It was purpose-built for the extermination of people, the best that German technology could provide for the final solution of the Jewish problem. First, you contained the people, separated the able-bodied from the young and the frail. Then you gassed the latter and cremated their bodies, an extermination industry. So we saw, we saw the train coming in, Days and nights, the trains came and came and came without stopping. I arrived in the middle of the night, and uh, the train stopped and they opened 
the doors and we were jumping down. I wanted to take my handbag and my, my suitcase. We had lots of things. So they, they screamed. No, no, no. We leave everything in the train. Now, how, how long had you been on the train? Uh, two days and three nights. Auschwitz, beyond its gas chambers and the five crematoria, had something unique. An orchestra. An orchestra of inmates. It was there to sedate new arrivals against the truth of Auschwitz, to provide a rhythmic beat for those who worked, but mainly to give relief to the German staff and guards, relief from the long days of killing. This film was made by survivors. No other record of the orchestra exists. But it lives in the mind of Fania Fenelon, for it was the orchestra that saved her from the ovens of Auschwitz. So uh, it was the next day that this big Polish woman came in and suddenly screamed, who can sing and play Madame Butterfly? <laughs> so I thought I'm already dead. And some, I don't know where, because here, Madame Butterfly, what does that mean? She said, if you can't sing and play Madame Butterfly, come with me. That was an audition of some kind, uh, to see if you had... Yes! It was an audition for uh, if I am capable of singing, because piano, it's all right, or mandolin, or doesn't, doesn't matter, guitar. But sing, they wanted wonderful singers, good singers. What staggers me, you know, when you're standing in this killing place, that music seemed so important. The SS, they killed people, and then they came to hear music. And they cried with Schumann, Träumerei. You mean they were yes. killing people all day? Yes, all day, sometimes all night. And then sometimes they came to our barrack at 3 o'clock in the morning. I remember singing Madame Butterfly at 3 o'clock in the morning for, for a bunch of SS who were very tired of killing people. So much of this has been destroyed. Kind oh, of. yes. But what was it like here in those days? Because the crematoria were working. The right? crematoria, yes. The chimneys five, were there. Five crematoriums they had here. And chimneys, we never saw the sky like we see it now. It was very low and always smoke because it burned and also the smell. When it's windy, I still have that smell of, of uh, burning bodies, you know? in my nose. It smelled it's terrible. Ashes, all the ashes. Which fell from the... Yes, yes, it fell all over here. Dr. Mengele, mm -hmm. the infamous doctor mm -hmm. in Auschwitz who did the, those horrific experiments yes. on people, came to the concerts, mm -hmm. correct? Oh, he came to our barrack nearly every day. Uh, from one transport that came from Hungary, Mengele took out uh, about 20 dwarfs, women and men. So first of all, he told the girls who sew and so on to make them beautiful dresses, long evening dresses for the women and very chic smoking for the, for the man. So then he decided that they, uh, we should give a concert for the dwarves. Uh, so we played, and they sat behind him, all of them, except two little that sat next to him. And uh, they were singing when we played something that they knew. They were laughing and they were in hands like that. And he was just sleeping. Here and there, and also. <laughs> and then after the concert, he took him to the gas. He gassed them. He gassed them all immediately after the concert. For in the meantime, hours. the music went on. Yes, and on, on and on. And on. All that 17 hours a day. Let me pause just to remind you what this place, this Auschwitz, was. Four million people died here in four years. Two million were shot or starved or threw themselves on the electrified fence. Another two million were systematically gassed. Most of them were Jews. All of them were cremated in these ovens. The ovens worked day and night. They had to in order to keep pace with the killing machinery. 
So important was the final solution that even near the end of the war, when the German army was desperately short of transport, trains carrying Jews to Auschwitz had priority over troops and ammunition for the war fronts. And so the killing went on to the strains of Beethoven and Schubert and Puccini. Fania, I've talked to, to survivors of other camps and of this place, and they all say the same thing, that in some way they are still prisoners of Auschwitz. Is that true? I am not. I am only when I dream. I have nearly every night I, I am in the camp. But I, uh, I could for, not forget. It's always in me. But I don't suffer. The story will continue after this. By New Year's 1945, the Russians were closing on Auschwitz. The Germans retreated back to Germany. They were ordered to bring the Jews with them to Belsen. They had not yet completed the final solution. In April 45, the British Army entered Belsen. The troops were shattered by what they saw. 13,000 corpses, unburied. The Germans, SS troops, were forced to bury the dead. Another 13,000 people subsequently died. Among the living, if they could be called living, was every conceivable abomination. But mostly, it was typhus. What happens the day after you're released? All the SS were arrested. And they were put on a truck. Huh? And he was driving very, very slowly. And we were allowed to throw stones on their heads. And we were just dancing and screaming, bravo, 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 bravo. And suddenly, an order came. They are war prisoners. Prisoners, don't touch them. Let me take you back to the day of the liberation of Belsen. The day of liberation, yes. Well, I had typhus, and I had no, no medicine whatsoever, nothing. And then I heard sounds. And then I opened my eyes, and over me was a beautiful young face with lots of red spots. And he was crying and crying. He was maybe 17 years old, I don't know. And he looked at all of us, and, and then he spoke to me. He said, do you hear me? I said, yes. Yes, you hear. You hear, yes. So I'll take you, I'll take you from here. And he took me in his arms and he brought me to a barrack. And uh, they had a microphone and he said, do something. Say something. Say something. And I, I, I looked and I said, allons enfants de la patrie. And then God save the king alone. And I was screaming like mad. God save the <laughs> It's terrible. And they play. then they took me to another barrack and they brought a piano, a very old, oh, it was horrible, that piano. Uh, but I sat there and it, I just played only God save the king. I don't know, 15 times I played God save the king because it was full English people around. <laughs> And it was recorded by a British correspondent, off-key, barely recognizable, and never more powerful. And then we 
left came back to life. Those who could 